Welcome to Studio X and today you will be learning how to create the titles from Fast and Furious 9. If you're new to this channel, welcome and if you're already subscribed then it's nice to see you again. Let's jump right in. The first step is to open up Cinema 4D which you can see I have right here already open. And to create the text you're going to go to MoGraph, Mo Text. Here it is. Make sure it's aligned to the middle. And I'm going to type in the text. Similar to what was written in the actual movie trailer, I'm just going to type in Justice is coming in all caps. But the font isn't really what you saw in the trailer. The closest font that I could find is Antique Olive. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the compact one right here. If you can tell, the text is a little too spaced out. So I'm going to go into vertical spacing and bring this down. This looks pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and bring out some depth. That is looking pretty nice. And go into caps and do fillet cap for both the start and the end. And that adds, as you can see, like a bevel almost to the front of the text and it also makes it thicker and this is what we need for the next step. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the steps. I'm going to go with 9 and I'm just going to bring down the radius to about 3. So you can see it looks nice and rounded and very smooth so when it's going to be reflective it'll get a really nice shine on it. Next thing that I will do is I will duplicate the text and just click on your mode text and copy and paste. If you're on a Mac, it's command C, command V. If you're on a PC, it'll be control C, command, uh, control V. And for the front text, I'm going to bring it out and just choose cap for front and back. So you can see our text is just within this region. As you saw in the trailer, the inside of the text kind of had a, uh, not a hole, but it was almost in indented where there was the black, uh, the black material. And that's what we are going to make now. So for this mo text, I'm just going to bring the depth down to 20 and switch the view by clicking this little window icon. And I'm going to go into top view and bring my second text just slightly in. This looks pretty good. Yes, this will be perfect. Next step is to make bool. So if you click and hold this icon here, you'll get bool. And just bring your remote texts in there. It might take a minute. So you can see this did it wrong. It did uh, the opposite, so all you have to do is just swap your texts, make sure the other one is on top of the other. And you can see now we have a nice little cutout. I think the cutout, it is too, uh, too deep in there. So instead of negative 20, I'll just do negative uh, 18. Oh, looks like the other way, so negative 22. Yes, that looks perfect. So a very nice thin edge all around here. That's already looking really nice. We're already get getting close without even making any materials or anything. Next step is to make a camera. So I'm going to make a new camera. I'm going to view it through the camera and I'll choose a wide angle about 25 millimeters and just zoom in nicely. Let's go ahead and change our settings to be 1920 by 1080. There we go, just so we can see the right aspect ratio and what we'll be seeing in the frame. And I'll just try to position it pretty close to uh, how it was. Maybe I'll rotate the camera. So you see I have the camera selected and I'll go right down into rotation and press negative three uh, or actually just three. Let's do negative three. A little bit from the bottom, yes. So something like this is looking pretty good. I 
perfect. I'm going to set my range to be uh, 150. And I'll animate the camera. So I want my camera to be here at the end. So I'll click on my camera. And just for the Z coordinates, that's what I'll be moving. So just, uh, or actually everything. So just click camera and hit the keyframe. Perfect. And I go back to the beginning and zoom it out very slightly and hit the keyframe. Click on your actual keyframe, it's the little blue square. And for interpolation, hit linear for both the first and the last keyframe. And that's so that you don't have smooth motion, so it doesn't start out slow, pick up speed, and then slow down again. You want a constant motion the entire time. So you can see similar to this right now. That's looking good. You also want to rotate the text. So I'm just going to group the bool object by right clicking on it and going to group objects. Perfect. And you're going to uh, be rotating this in, yep, on this axis. So on the zero keyframe, uh, on the zero frame, you can just keyframe uh, the rotation here and go to the last one. And let's do something like, yeah, negative 10, seems good. And then you'll do the same thing by clicking on the keyframe and going to linear for both of them. And now if you watch it, you can see the text is slowly rotating towards the camera and the camera is slowly zooming in. It's looking pretty good. Now we need to make the environment. So exit the camera so you're not accidentally touching it. And let's go ahead and make an environment. So first thing is to make a sky and right click Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing and turn off Scene by Camera. This is so that you can see it in the reflections but you don't actually render it out behind the text and all that stuff so it doesn't mess you up. Go into the materials, double click to make a new material turn off color and reflectance and turn on luminance so you can actually use it as a light. And under the texture, you'll see three little dots. You can click on that to choose a texture. And I downloaded this nice sky on fire in 2K HDR image. I can link it down in the description if you want to download the exact same one. And just hit open, hit yes. Now you can see that the material is now the HDR and just click and drag it to the sky. Perfect. I would suggest turning on the reflections in your options preview because the next step is to make a reflective material. So double click to make a new material. I'm going to turn off color under reflectance, I'm gonna turn off default specular and just add GGX. So you can see now it's just a chrome ball, which is fine for now, but you will be changing it. So open up your group, find the text. So it's gonna be this one. I'll call this chrome and I'll call this black, just so I'll know uh, which material to throw where. So I'm gonna take this and throw it on the chrome part. And there you go, you can see that there's a reflection now that you can see, that is perfect. And the reason why you wanna be able to see the reflection is because you're gonna duplicate this material for now. And I'm going to call this black. And just bring down the reflectance to 30% just so you can kinda of tell that it's a different material. We're gonna go into the settings of it later but I want you to throw it on onto your, onto your black part of the text because now we will be working on that reflection, that little shine that you can see when the text is moving. In order to do that, you are going to go into these objects and make a plane and rotate it 90 degrees. Make it a lot bigger, a lot, lot bigger. This should be pretty good. Move it back and to the right and make a new material. Turn everything off except for luminance. Make sure it's at 100%. Take it, 
and bring it here. And now when you're looking through the camera, you can see this is where the shine is going to be. So I would suggest opening up a second window here. Working from the top view is probably a good idea. And now you can just go ahead and move over your reflection. Um, you could even rotate it to kind of face more towards uh, the text. So now you can see when you're playing this, the reflection will be moving off, which is perfect, just like it was in the trailer. Now it's time to actually make your materials. Let's go ahead and work with the black one. Let's go ahead and reset the opacity of the layer to be 100% and you'll just get this full on shine. And go into layer color and make the black be about 17% and hit OK. So now you can see you're starting to get this black material. But you also need to make it blurry. So I'm just going to take this and crank it to about 12%. So you can see now it has some uh, reflection, some blurriness to it. And take your specular strength and bring it all the way down to zero. So the black material is good to go. Now let's work on our reflective material. So just double click on it. So this one you don't have to change as much because it just needs to be chrome. All you're going to do is take roughness to 14%. And if you open up the layer for now options, you can see that it has two different settings. Dielectric is for more glass objects and conductor is for warm metals. So if you click on conductor, there's a couple different presets and iron is gonna be the closest one to the look that you're looking for, which is a nice little uh, reflective, shiny uh, texture right here. And once again, in your specular strength, just bring this down to zero, so you don't have any specular on your material, and you're basically good to go. Now, all you have to do is set up some render settings. So open up your render settings and add physical. I would suggest sampling quality to be medium with blurriness subdivision to be set to three. Subsurface scattering, you can bring it down to one because there's no sur subsurface scattering materials in this scene. Maybe bring down the shadow subdivision a little bit to 2.5. Shading error threshold, make it 10. And for shading subdivisions, I would also make that three. Also, we should add ambient occlusion and global illumination. And for global illumination, under the primary method, choose QMC. And for secondary method, do light mapping. Samples uh, are set at 75%, but let's do 80, just to make it a little bit more accurate. And I'll probably make a separate tutorial for using global illumination settings to really optimize your scene. So be on the lookout for that and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I do release that tutorial. But these settings look pretty good. All we need to do now is for output, make sure that we have all frames selected. Make sure you have an alpha channel checked for when you're rendering. And for the format, I would highly prefer you render out as an open EXR sequence. It's the highest quality that you can achieve. And if you're doing multi-passes, you can also bake them all into your uh, open EXR file so you're not getting different, different files. And for the tutorial, uh, just make a folder. I'll just call this FF for Fast and Furious. And you are basically good to go. So all you have to do now is hit render and I'll see you in After Effects. Now before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. All right, let's continue. Now that you're in After Effects, let's import the footage that we just rendered from Cinema 4D. You can do that by double clicking in the project window and going to your desktop, finding your render location, choosing the first file, which is zero, choosing create new composition, open EXR sequence, and just hit open. I'll change the quality to full. And as you can see, the background is see-through. So first thing you'll need to do is hit new solid, make comp size and make it black. Perfect. 
and bring it down. Next step is to make a new solid. We'll call this flares. And in this shot, there's actually two separate flares. Now let's import our Cinema 4D file. So double click here. Go to your project and find the, uh, find the Cinema 4D file. Uncheck create composition and just hit open. Great, take it and bring it in. And all you need to do is just extract the scene data. So you can see on the bottom it says Cinema 4D scene data, just hit extract and that's gonna give you a camera. So now you can just go ahead and delete the Cinema 4D file. The reason why we need this is we will be making our flares match the camera movement. So in the flares, go to effect, video copilot, optical flares. Let's go into options and choose a nice one that kind of looks like the one from the trailer. That one actually looks really close. That's basically spot on. The only thing is the streak. So I'm just going to go into the streak and stretch it more vertically. Yeah, about 350 looks good. And I'll just tune down the brightness of it so it's not as noticeable. Perfect. So you can see without it, with it. Great, hit okay. And for positioning mode, make sure to choose track lights. Great, name starts with anything. And just go ahead and do layer, new, light. Hit okay. So you can see we have our flare now. And for flare mode, you can just bring it down under the solid and do screen. Hit P for position, and just bring it closer to the camera. So that it's uh, slightly bigger in the scene. Bring it to the middle. Perfect. Now just duplicate the spotlight. Bring it over, over to the right. To be off camera. Somewhere here looks good. The only thing is I'm going to go into the flares. Change name starts with A. And the middle one is gonna be A and I will duplicate the flare. Start its name with B, and I'll name this B. And I'll just bring this one to the front so that the actual flare lights up the text as well, as you can see right here. Perfect. Next step is to change the temperature on the text, because if you look at the trailer, it's a little bit more uh, a little more bluish, a little, uh, and a lot more contrasted. So to do that, I'm just going to go to levels, take the levels, bring it onto where text. Open this up a little bit wider, crush the black more. That looks good. Go into the red channel. And we'll just bring this down and go into the greens and bring that down slightly too. And then just go into the blues and bring those out just a little bit.
So you can see without it and with it, definitely a big difference. And now you're kind of starting to look like the Fast and Furious title. All I want to do now is for the back flares, and I'll just rename this, this to black back flares. I'm just going to go ahead and get fast blur, put some fast blur on it, and blur this pretty heavy, maybe 80. The only other thing is for the front flares, you can see that there's a lot of different ring elements and uh, those are kind of getting a little bit distracting and as you can see they don't have them in here so you're going to go into options i'll put this in a corner so you can really see where the elements are and you can just hide these multi irises you can keep these little ones just anything that's a really big uh, like this there we go that already got rid of most of the problems That little one we'll get rid of too. These little ones and these. Perfect. So now we have a really nice clean flare. So you can just hit OK. Perfect. That is looking very nice and fresh. So let's just make a new layer. Solid. Make it black. Hit OK. Double click on the rectangle. Bring the sides out. Choose Subtract, bring these down. So the red is still looking pretty, pretty purplish, so we're just gonna go back and just play around with that a little bit. Go into the green and change that a bit too. Maybe you'll also add hue and saturation to it. There you go. Now you've got your Fast and Furious text. That's it. You just learned how to create the titles for Fast and Furious 9. So if you like this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to be updated whenever we release new videos. And if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.